Hi everyone! My name is Colleen and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Art Museum. Welcome to We Wednesday! Today we're going to be talking about different points of view and how we see things. We'll start by reading a story together, then we'll be looking at some art from the museum's collection, and we'll end by making our own art together. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you'd like to get a closer look, if you'd like to talk about something with the people that you're with, or if you need to gather some art supplies. Are you ready? Let's get started. To begin today, we're going to be doing a quick warm-up activity to get us thinking about different perspectives. To do our activity, you're going to need a piece of paper and a pencil or something to draw with. I invite everyone to draw a picture of a cat with the people that you're with without looking at each other's papers. Are you ready? Go! If you need to pause the video while you make your quick drawing, you can do that. All finished? Take a look at your drawing. Did you draw your cat from the top? From the back? From the front or the side? How is your drawing different from the other people that you're with? People see things differently based on where they are or how they feel about things. Maybe you love cats. Maybe you don't like cats. Maybe you're allergic to cats. All of those things are going to affect how you view things. Now that we've thought a little bit about different perspectives, let's get ready to read our story. Today, we're going to be reading a story called They All Saw a Cat. If you've joined me for Wee Wednesday before, you may know that when I read a new book, or even if it's a book that I've read before, I like to take a look at the cover to see if I can find out some things about the story before I read. Let's take a look at this cover together. What do you notice? I see one big clue on this cover to help us figure out what the story might be about. I see a cat here. And it looks like the cat might be walking. It's got one arm kind of stretched forward. They also have a bell on their collar, which might make a little jingling noise while they walk. And it looks like they might be going somewhere. What do you think the story might be about? based on what we can see. Let's dive in. They All Saw a Cat by Brendan Wenzel. The cat walked through the world with its whiskers, ears, and paws. I think we might need some whiskers, ears, and paws while we're on our walk as a cat today. Are you ready? We're gonna need our whiskers, perk up our ears, and we're gonna need our paws. Now try that again. Whiskers, ears, paws. And the child saw a cat. And the dog saw a cat. How do you think the dog sees this cat? What word would you use to describe how the cat looks? And the fox saw a cat. Yes, they all saw a cat. How does the cat look different to the fox than it did to the dog. The cat walked through the world with its whiskers, ears, and paws. Let's get out our whiskers, perk up our ears, and get our paws. Good job. And the fish saw a cat. Why do you think the cat looks much bigger here? How do you think the rest of your surroundings might look if you were a fish in a fishbowl? And the mouse saw a cat. saw a cat. 
Yes, they all saw the cat. The cat walked through the world with its whiskers, ears, and paws. Are you ready? Get out your whiskers, perk up your ears, and get your paws. Great job. And the bird saw a cat. How do you think the world would look if you could be a bird flying overhead and see it from a bird's point of view? And the flea saw a cat. How do you think that tiny flea might feel? And the snake saw a cat. And the skunk saw a cat. And the worm saw a cat, and the bat saw a cat. Yes, they all saw the cat. Yes, they all saw a cat. What do you notice about this picture and story? A child, and a dog, and a fox, and a fish, and a mouse, and a bee, and a bird, and a flea, and a snake, and a skunk, and a worm, and a bat. The cat knew them all, and they all knew the cat. And the cat walked through the world with its whiskers, ears, and paws. Ready? Last time. Whiskers. Perk up your ears, get those paws out. Then it came to the water. Sometimes when I'm reading a story, I like to predict what's going to happen on the next page based on what I've already read. What do you think's gonna happen next? Let's find out. And imagine what it saw. The end. I invite you to think about your favorite part of the story and talk about that with the people that you're with. We're going to travel to the museum now to look at some works of art. Let's imagine how we might get there. Are you going to take a giant blimp up in the sky so that everything you see below is really teeny tiny? Or are you going to take an underwater submarine? Or are you going to travel with a worm and wiggle underneath the earth and see all that there is to see? So you decide. Once you've decided, if you'd like, you can close your eyes and imagine yourself going. Whew, wow. That was a really exciting journey. We saw lots of new things, but I'm really glad that we made it. In order to get ready to look at our works of art, we're going to be doing something I'm calling our Mindfulness Minute. So mindfulness is taking the time to slow down and really pay attention to what you're doing. In order to practice mindfulness today and to think about different perspectives, we're gonna be using a tool to help us see differently today. I'm gonna to be using a mirror, and this is just a small mirror that I have. So you can use a small mirror like this, or you can also use a mirror maybe that you have hanging around in your home on the wall. So with your mirror nearby, we're gonna start by taking a big deep breath in through our nose. And while we do that, we're going to raise our shoulders all the way up to our ears. In. And then as we breathe out, we're going to relax and lower our shoulders out. Let's try that again. In, raise those shoulders, out, relax and lower your shoulders. Now, with your mirror that you have in your hand or that you have on the wall, I want you to use that to try to get a different perspective. So you can look at it, move it around. If it's a mirror that's on your wall, you can move your body from side to side or up and down. 
you can see if you can find different perspectives that maybe you haven't been able to see before. What new things do you notice? Let's take another deep breath in, and this time we're going to look in our mirror, okay? So let's take a big deep breath in and watch ourselves raise our shoulders all the way up to our ears. And take a big deep breath out and relax and watch those shoulders go down, down, down. Great job. I feel much more ready to look at some really amazing works of art. We're going to look at some works of art from the museum's collection together. If you'd like, you can scroll down on the page to get a closer look at the images we'll be viewing. Feel free to pause the video at any time to do this. Take a close look at this work of art. What do you see? There are many delicious things to eat in this work of art. Which one would you like to taste? This is a still life painting called Still Life with Strawberries. It's by an artist named Hannah Brown Skeel. A still life is a painting, drawing, or photograph of an arrangement of objects such as food, flowers, dishes, fabrics, and other items with interesting shapes, colors, and textures. An artist would arrange the objects and then create an image of them based on what they see. Let's zoom in to get a closer look. How many different objects do you see in this still life? If you'd like, you can count them with the people that you're with. Hannah Brown Skeel, the artist who painted this still life, was a self-taught artist working in St. Louis a long time ago. She didn't have formal training or go to school to study art. She taught herself how to paint. She would have painted this to hang in someone's home. It would have shown that the owner had elegant taste. If you were to create a still life, what objects would you include? Let's see how another artist painted a still life in a different way. Look closely at this work of art. What do you notice? Let's zoom in to get a different view. What do you notice about the way the artist painted the still life? How is this work of art different from the last painting we looked at together? How are they the same? This is another still life painting called Eggplant and Green Pepper. It's by an artist named Charles DeMuth. Charles DeMuth also painted fruits and vegetables, just like Hannah Brown Skeel, but they painted them in different ways. Eggplants and green peppers were a favorite subject to paint for Charles DeMuth. He focused on their shape and how light reflected off them, rather than trying to make them look exactly how they appear in real life. Which way do you prefer a still life to be painted? There's not a right answer. Artists get to choose the way that they want their subjects to be seen. Think about how you might like to paint a still life in your own way. Now that we looked at some art together, let's travel back home so we can make our own art. Hop in your blimp way up in the sky, or get in your underwater submarine, or wiggle underground with the worms, and let's head home. For our art making project today, we are going to be making our own still life paintings. So if you'll remember from when we just looked at the artwork, a still life is a painting or a photograph um, or a drawing of a collection of objects. And so the first step to making your still life painting is to find some objects that you'd like to make your painting of. So I was inspired by the artwork that we looked at today. So I found some fruit in my kitchen that I thought I would paint. So I have a banana, an apple, and a pear here just in a bowl. But you can paint so many different things for a still life. You can use books or toys or blocks or really anything will work. Glasses, uh, fabric. Um, you can look in all different areas of your home for objects for still life and you can arrange them however you'd like. Um, so I liked it, mine with my banana kind of on top here because I like the shape and the colors all together. 
so you can kind of figure out the way that you'd like it to look and then set it aside for when you're ready to paint. So our other materials that we're going to need today is a piece of paper and I found this piece of cardboard so I thought I would paint on that today but you can paint on anything, um, recycled paper or just paper that you have lying around your home. And then for our paints today, I actually decided to make my own paint today. So this is a recipe that's on the resource guide, which you can find on the same page that you're viewing this video. If you go to, uh, just scroll down, go to the resource guide and the recipe is there. And this is made using flour, water, salt, and food coloring. Um, it's really easy to make. You can store it in the refrigerator to use it at a later time. Um, Grown-ups, if you have little ones who like to taste things, this is also taste um, free. You can taste it um, and it won't hurt you. Um, if you'd like to make it so that you can eat it and it's okay, um, just uh, put the flour in the oven for a little bit and that's also in the resource guide too and that will make it completely taste, taste available. Um, so I made paint today, but you can also use paint that you have at your home. Um, you'll need a paintbrush or something else to paint with. And I was thinking about, hmm, what else could I paint with? And this is just a sponge from my kitchen that I put on a clothespin so I could um, easily paint with it, but you could use a lot of other things to paint with. Um, and then I have some water to rinse my paintbrush in between colors. And I have a towel here in case I wanna dry my paintbrush. So let's get started. I think to start, I'm going to paint my bowl that I have. And I just have my objects here off to the side. And you can think about how you want your still life to be. So remember, we're talking about perspectives today and thinking about that, you know, things look differently to everyone depending on where you see it or where you're coming from, your feelings about it. So you get to make your still life look any way that you want. And you get to change it based on what you like. So like my bowl's white, but I think I might make my bowl blue today. So I really like this blue paint that I made. I think it's a really interesting color. And remember, you can always mix colors. If you'd like to do that, you don't have to keep your paints the same color. That's a fun thing to do. So I have my little egg carton here for my to hold my paints, and I left a couple blank spots in case I wanted to mix some colors, and maybe I'll do that in a little bit. And remember the best materials to use for this project are the ones that you already have. So don't worry about what you have. You can make a still life with anything. And if you don't wanna use paint, you can always draw with colored pencils or crayons or markers or any other drawing materials that you have at home. It does not have to be a painting. So there's my blue bowl. Now I think I might be ready to move on to my fruit. So I'm going to rinse my brush and dry it off a little bit. I think I might start with that pear that's kind of over here to the side. And I'm painting my still life kind of facing the front of my fruit bowl, but you could paint it from a bird's eye view, which means that you're gonna paint it looking overhead. Or you could paint it from another view. There's really no wrong way to do it. Oh, I'm getting some little cardboard pieces here. my pear, I might add a little yellow because my pear kind of looks green and yellow. Let's see how that, oh yeah, that's adding a little more different kind of color to my pear. I might need to add a stem. I might need to mix a color for my stem color. And now I'll paint my apple. My apple kind of has some yellow and red flecks in it, so we'll, I'll see if 
We'll see how that turns out. And you can make paint with a lot of different things. So if you don't have flour, you can use cornstarch. I've seen that. Um, if you don't have food coloring, you can kind of experiment with other things that you might have in your kitchen, like different spices. Sometimes different spices can make different colors. Or if you have paint that you bought at the store, that works great too. to this. I think for my banana I might try to use my homemade paintbrush with my sponge. And you could, you know, use fabric to paint with or string or lots of other things can kind of be their own um, paintbrush so it doesn't have to be a sponge if you don't have a paintbrush at home. And depending on what you use for your paintbrush, it might create different kinds of lines or different kind of texture when you paint with it, which can be different. So like here, I might try to see what, if I kind of tap, it might create a different effect. Yeah, and that almost kind of helps me make the spots that are on my banana. So my banana's a little ripe. It's probably time for it to be eaten. And I might use this to add some more details to my fruit, so maybe this will help me add some of that yellow that I want in my apple and my pear. Now I think we might need to mix a darker color for my stems on my fruit here. So I might mix, sometimes the best way to make a dark color if you don't have black or brown is to mix a lot of different colors together. And that usually will help you make a dark color. So here I'm already getting kind of, this is my dark purple when I mixed my blue and my green together. Not my blue and my green, my blue and my red together made purple. And now I might add some green to that, see what happens. And that's a really fun part about painting. That's what I like about painting is kind of experimenting, seeing what happens, making new colors. So here now I'm kind of getting that gray brown that I was looking for. I might add a little blue to it, see if I can get a little darker. And then I'll see about adding my stems on my fruit. So there's my pear stem, and my apple has a little stem. And this might even help me make some of the, my other dark spots that are on my banana here. And maybe I'll add a little outline to my bowl. is going to be my still life painting using my homemade paints. Thank you for joining me today here at We Wednesday. We hope you had fun. I wanted to show you another example of a still life painting that I made. So this is the one that we made together. This is my fruit bowl still life using the paints that I made on cardboard. And then I also made just a really simple still life on a piece of paper um, of some blocks that I have here. Um, and I just stacked them up and arranged them. And then I used the same paints to paint on a, on a sheet of paper. So there's lots of different ways to do this. We would love to see your still lifes. Please post them on social media and share them with us. You can use the hashtags STL Art Museum and We Wednesday. We hope to see you back here next week. Keep on creating. Bye.